Chairman, sir, <coughs> thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak a few words on the adjournment motion moved by Honorable Nityas Bakimaka. <coughs> While welcoming today's motion on the question of Palestine, let me express my observation about Sri Lanka's policy on this vital global issue that has unfortunately for the past 75 years eluded a just solution, a solution acceptable to all parties, especially the Palestinians. Since Sri Lanka's independence in 1948, our governments had supported the Palestinian cause and strongly opposed Zionist expansionism as has been clearly shown in our vote in favor of multiple United Nations resolution, including the 1975 UN resolution 3379-12 that affirmed that Zionism is a form of racism and racial dis discrimination. Sri Lanka's early post-independence governments, be they of the United National Party or of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, stood by the Palestinian cause, as they believed it was their moral duty to extend their full support to the freedom cause of a people. We, as a newly independent country, valued freedom and understood the freedom struggle of the Palestinian people. Their problem was essentially an unfinished colonization problem. It was created by colonial and imperial forces after World War I. Our resource to support freedom causes worldwide, including the Palestinian freedom cause, saw our governments in the 1950s, 1970s, and 1980s playing a leading role in the Afghan Asian Solidarity Movement and in the Non-Aligned Movement. We make sorry, the Palestinian cause has been very close to the arts of Sri Lankans over the years and successive governments have stood in solidarity with the struggle of the Palestinian people. The people of Sri Lanka had recognized the fact that the Palestinian people have not been only been deprived of their homeland, but continue to be subject of atrocities committed by the Israelis, and have therefore supported them in different international forums. Mr. Chairman, I would like to cite a few examples which confirmed our unstinted support for the Palestinian cause. In 1976, when then government led by Mrs. Hilma Bandaranaika hosted the Nanalan summit, it came under tremendous pressure from Western governments to exclude any mention of support for the Palestinian cause. But Mrs. Bandaranaika bravely defied Western pressure and devoted a substantial part to the Palestinian issue in the final summit communique. Mr. Chairman, we were then very proud of our country's morally correct Palestinian policy. The Sri Lankan people understood that the Palestinian problem is not a Muslim problem, not an Arab problem, but a humanity problem. As a result, Early Sri Lankan leaders, especially Mrs. Bandaranaika, they are household names in the Middle East. But where do we stand today? Officially, we claim we stand by the two-state solution, with an independent Palestinian state being created in keeping with the 1967 borders. But our proactive and morality-based Palestinian policy is sadly not evident. Even when the suffering the Palestinian people undergo in occupied terrorist aggravates, we make no misstatement. When 
Israel forces shared their responsibility of protecting people under their occupation and continue their oppression. We were shocked by this silence when Jenin was under attack a few weeks ago. We were shocked by the warm welcome the Israel ambassador received in Sri Lanka while the Palestinian lands were being forcibly taken to build settlements for Israelis. Thus, the toast symbolize our endorsement of Israelis' oppression of the Palestinian people. Many of the Western countries, including the United States, have supported the Israel despite their many violations of international law. In contrast, Sri Lanka and the third world have consequently supported the Palestinian cause wholeheartedly and highlighted the continuing injustice that continues to take place even after 75 years. Sri Lanka has over the years been a grateful friend of the Arab and Palestinian people. Successive governments and the people of Sri Lanka have championed the cause of the Palestinian to locally and in world forums. The last year was a particularly bad year with regard to the transactions by the Israeli forces in occupied territory. UN officials have cautioned that unless this continuous resort to violence is brought to an end, the situation can take a turn for the worse. The latest in the long list of brutalities inflicted on the Palestinians is the attack on the refugee camp in Jenin. In one of the firecast assaults in two decades on the occupied West Bank, Israel forces have brought death and widespread destruction to the occupants of the refugee camp, which United Nations experts had described as amounting to violation of international law. I wish to refer to what Francis Albanese, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the Palestinian territories, had said about the attacks in Jenin. She had described the recent Israel attacks as collective punishment. The United Nations Rapporteur had accused Israel of carrying out possible war crimes during its military operation in the Western Bank city of Jenin, charging it with killing children and displacing, displacing large numbers of civilians. The attacks were the fire crash in the West Bank since the destruction of the Jenin camp in 2002. Albany said, referring to a military incursion during the height of the Second Intifada. Since the creation of Israel in 1948, the Zionist state has been a law unto itself and ignored the expressions of disapproval by the international community in numerous UN resolutions. The Zionist ideology that gave rise to the Israel state and continued to sustain its expansion did not cut weapons for the many United Nations resolutions that were passed in a bid to restrain its uncontrollable excesses. The international community has watched helplessly as Israel continues unchecked with its brazen violation of Palestinian rights. The Zionist campaign to create a Jewish state in the midst of the Palestinian homeland began with the infamous Belfort Declaration of the Palestinians. Even before the ink had dried on the United Nations resolution that created Israel, the Jewish state had unlawfully expanded its borders beyond the boundaries set out in the resolution. We urge the government not to abandon the Palestinian cause. If you love freedom, we should love the freedom of our Palestinian brethren.
Honorable Member, you have two more minutes. Thank you. As South Africa's great statesman, Nelson Mandela rightly said, South Africa's freedom is incomplete with the freedom for Palestinian. We cannot and should not ab abandon the Palestinian cause by pointing to the policy shift of other non-aligned non -aligned countries which have embraced the West and some West Asian nations which have signed the so-called Abraham Accords. Mr. Jarman, let's come together to end Israel colonization of Palestinian. Let us all in one voice condemn Israel's expansion policy, its illegal settlement, building activities in occupied territories, its oppression of the Palestinian people, its apartheid policies, and its continuous violation of international law. Let us reaffirm our support for the Palestinian right to live within secure borders as citizens of a free nation. I call upon the international community to continue to put pressure on the Israel government in order to restrain itself and implement the two-state solution that has been put forward as an ultimate solution to the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Gaurava Gajendra Kumar Purnambalam.